Previously on The Bill. Didn't scare us. I found him shot dead in his car. And you think Larson did it? I thought of you getting hurt because of your involvement with me. I'd be more worried about what he'd do to you. If you don't tell me, I'm going to make sure Dan's mobile doesn't stop ringing. This doesn't go any further. He's seen the mobile. Hello, Dan. Excuse me, sir. Never would. About what? Would you happen to know anything about this? It's a twenty-pound note. Handed in at the bar by your good self. Says who? Says the landlord. Could have been anyone. He says it was definitely you, you see. So come on, where's he getting money from? Cash point, local supermarket. Uh -oh. Now come on, sir. You know, and I know, you didn't get this out of an ATM. The ink's still wet. All right. Picked it up at the... Oh, oh dear, oh dear, we're out of luck. No way to run. Got any more of this money? Uh -huh. Right. I'm arresting you on suspicion of tendering capital currency. Can't leave you alone, can she? Take it that is your bit on the side. Your married bit on the side. Keep that out. It's a bit risky though, isn't it? What can I say? I like taking risks. Let's just hope her husband's small and weak and on crutches with both his arms and plastic. Let's just give it a rest. Joe. It's not funny. No, no, girls. Come here, I've got a job for you. Did you do that PNC check on Evans? Yeah, he's got a form. For what? Well, fencing mainly. Bit of shoplifting. Nothing major. So counterfeit cash is a bit of a leap up for him. I mean, he's hardly Reggie Cray, is it? <laughs> Chances are something in the chain, is though. Yeah, and odds on Mr Evans knows who that is. I'm impressed. You've done a very good job. I didn't make him, if that's what you think. Who did? Don't give me the run around, Eddie. These are fresh off the press. You're the first to handle them. I sold a few things. Telly. DVD player. Guy who bought them me that lot. Who was he? So you sold your TV to someone you don't know, and they handed over just under 200 quid's worth of counterfeit. What can I say? Can't trust anyone these days, can you? Can you give me a description? Looks a bit like him. You know, Eddie, getting nabbed with one hooky 20 pound note, that's bad luck. But 180 quid. Hello? Are you sure there's nothing you want to tell me? Yeah, I'm sure. Must be strange for you. Not being able to talk about her. Oh, give it a rest. Well, I mean, you can't even mention her name. It can't be easy. What number is it? Two. Ah, Mr. Orr? Yeah? PC Casper, PC Hanson, Sun Hill. Do you mind if we have a word? Uh, yeah. Perhaps it'll be easier if you, um... What? If I trusted you and told you who she was? Amber, I trust you about as far as I can throw you. John Orr. What's wrong? What's happened? We've received information from the British phonographic industry that this address is being used for illegal downloading and bootlegging. You want to talk inside? Um, yeah. So what's all this about, then? According to this, the British phonographic industry are investigating into a couple of major illegal download sites. Your ISP address was registered with them. I tell of over 2,000 times. My ISP address? That's your internet address, particular to you. Like a phone number or house address. See, the point is, illegally downloading music is theft, Mr Orm. Well, OK, so I've downloaded a few songs, but, I mean, just for my own use, so I'll pass them on to a couple of mates. What you do with it once it's downloaded is irrelevant. The fact is, you've stolen it. You said you gave the music to friends, so do you have the CD-burning equipment here on the premises? Yes, yeah, in the other room. Well, can we see it, please? 
Right, Eddie Evans. First offence, age 16. Spent quite a few years at Her Majesty's pleasure ever since. Well, it's consistent. I'll give him that. It's all very low-key stuff. Though, all still open prison. Yeah. Any known associates? No. No names, if that's what you mean. Right. I want an eye kept on him. Bail and tail. You're letting him go? Well, we could throw the book at him. But I'd much rather see where he runs when we release him. If there is a bigger fish, maybe Eddie will lead you to him. You want us to follow him? Zane, do you have a problem with this? No. Is it worth it, Sarge? You said yourself, the guy's hardly a player. But the people making the counterfeit are. Keep me up to speed, will you? Three CD burners. Then one enough for personal use. CD covers. Oh, CDs. Empty cases. Padded envelopes. I think we'd better continue this down at the station, don't you, sir? our time here, you know. It's not taking us anywhere. No. Sam is right. He is up to something. It's too jumpy not to be. Hello. No, hang on. I'll be with you in a sec. John Orme illegally downloading and distributing music. Full name, please. <coughs> John Orme. Well, on your lane, sir. Dan's just done disappearing out. He's got a woman on the go. No. Good looking single bloke with a woman on the go. What is the world coming to? Address, please, Mr. Orr. Yeah, I wish you Address, please, Mr. Orr. Yeah, me too. Text me later after a meeting with the car. Maybe we can think of something to have our own little meeting about. See you later. Bye. I could have stayed at home and watched paint dry. <laughs> oh, here we go. The most we can hope for with this guy is a parking fine. Well, at least his road tax is up to date. You didn't check his tax disc. Would have checked his tyres given half a chance. <laughs> Honestly, the only people I've given CDs to are a few guys in work and a couple of mates. Are a lot of your mates at university? Because that's where the bulk of your customers are. That stuff's been belting out of halls of residence all over the country for the past six months. The British phonographic industry seized over 200 of your CDs at a university computer fair. Of course you know that, don't you? Because you legged it from your stall as soon as you saw them coming. Come on, John, we've got you. You've left a trail everywhere you've been. So, who's helping you with the making and distribution? It's just me. It's a one-man operation. Really? You hold down a full-time job, copy all them CDs, distribute them, and manage to go to a few trade fairs. There's not enough hours in a day. We need to know who's working with you. We need to know, because if we don't, you're going to take the fall on your own. That means a hefty fine, thousands, and a prison sentence. So, who's working with you? No one. It's just me. Curiouser and curiouser. Yeah, hi, it's DC Sim. I need you to do a check for me, please. Can you tell me who owns the workshop on Lassa Street? It's number seven. Yeah, can you call me back? Thanks. 
Right. Should we pull him? Why? When it's just started to get interesting. Dan! We're following up your request for a place in the territorial support group. Oh, cheers, Sarge. Well, this place not exciting enough for you or something? Oh, he's a regular election man, this one. You love taking risks, don't you? Well, just to let you know, your name's on the list, but it's a long one. So don't expect to hear anything soon, all right? Yeah, well, at least I'm on it, eh? Yeah. Hello? Where are you? Right, give me two minutes. What exactly are we looking for? Right, enough information on CD burning to make it sound like I know what I'm talking about. I want to blind Mr Orm with science. Well, you know, like dazzle him a little bit. So you still think he's bluffing? Well, how much more evidence do we need? How many people of his age listen to the music he's supposed to have downloaded? I mean, it's club music. Yeah, but we're not doing him for listening to it, we're doing him for selling it. Selling it? He couldn't even pronounce it. Yeah, I'll check this. MC Justice featuring Squeaky Squaw. You say she's so-so, but nobody know my hoe like I know. <laughs> now, you know, like I've been to a few clubs in my time, and I've never heard of half the stuff on that list, so he's got no chance. I know he's covering, and I'm going to find out who for. You look great. You sound like you made yourself. When did you get back? A couple of hours ago. Nice Pete. Meeting up with a couple of his cronies. Catching up with business, I think he said. Hmm. One minute you were in, the next you were gone. Hasn't got anything to do with Vince Garrison getting shot, has it? It's pretty obvious. If Pete goes missing the day he's killed and he drags you off with him. Can't you stop being a copper just for a minute? Yeah, I'm sorry. <sighs> I can't believe you're here. <laughs> You're all I've been thinking about for weeks. That's good to know. No, ever since we left, all I wanted to do was come back. And I would have if I could. <sighs> Told you he was up to something. Eddie's selling counterfeit cash. Oh, he's backing out wherever he is. Yeah, this is DC Nadir. I need a vehicle index check on a dark grey Golf Tango 644 Juliet Echo Papa. Have uniform do a crewman check and make sure that they keep an eye on him when they're out in their travels today. We need to know where he's headed. Uh, where are you going? We've got him on film. We've seen what's happening. Let's nick him. The deal didn't go through, Zane. Even better. Eddie will have a bag full of counterfeit money. If we nick him now, we lose the trail. Just wait. For what? Eddie's the mule. He's not running this. Sooner or later, he's going to have to check in with his boss and we're going to be there to watch him do it. If we do it your way, we lose him. And you'll be the one to explain it to D.S. Nixon, not me. Followed him to a car park on Godwick Street. That's where he met this man. He didn't close the deal, though. Oh. Any news on him? Not yet. Lovely, thank you. Look who the puppet master is. I don't believe you. Welcome back, Mr. Larson. I never thought we'd see him again. Not this soon, anyway. He knows full well we've got nothing on him for the garrison murder. Eddie can't know what he's getting involved in. He'd be running in the opposite direction if he did. Have you checked with the workshop where you saw Eddie collect the bag? It might have something to do with one of Larson's companies. We've spoken to the owner already. He's rented it to one Glyn Kellett. Oddly enough, his description matches Eddie's, to a T. It seems like he's renting it under an alias. Maybe Larson's looking for a replacement for Garrison. Eddie? Hardly the right calibre. Right, Larson will leave first. Evans will hang around for a minute, then he'll leave. I want him stopped. This deal didn't go through. He's driving around with a car full of counterfeit cash. Dean, D.S. Nixon. 
Can you get uniform to do a casual stop on a car for me? Yeah, red Corsa, November 367, Romeo Whiskey, November. Oh, nice and casual, that's what they said. Make it look natural. Here, Tony. Tony? Tony? Might be our man. Why did you say? Here we asked our technical team for some figures about the equipment you've been using, and they said it's capable of reproducing three CDs a minute, is that right? Yeah, and they would be, what, CDRs, CDRWs? Uh, uh, a mix of them all, really. Right, and in what format did you download it? You might as well tell us, because we'll find out anyway. I've already admitted it, isn't that enough? I'm afraid not, Mr. Orm. We need details. Analog? Did you use a built-in modem to connect? A surfboard? Uh, both. And I guess you edited in a firelight suite. Are you sure about that? Positive. See, the thing is, Mr. Orm, it doesn't exist. I've just made it up. You know less about this game than I do. So who are you protecting? Look, I'll sign whatever you want. Can okay. you sit down, please, Mr. Orr? Look, I did it, OK? I shouldn't have, and I'll take whatever's coming. Sir, can you please sit down? Please, please just let me sign the statement, because I'm sure you've got something better to do. We're now sent down to you, so sit. Now, who's the brains behind all this? You might as well save us all a lot of bother and tell us. Because it'll go in your favour if it goes to court, which it will. Look, I really don't want to say. Look, I've told you, I'll take responsibility. That's not good enough, I'm afraid, Mr. Orm. Now, if you don't tell us, we'll find out for ourselves. <coughs> it's my son, Liam. I only see him once a week. He lives with his mum. And where did you get the equipment? I bought it for him. I wanted him to have something special, you know, something nice for when he came to stay. Well, most of his stuff's at his mum's, but when he comes to me, he listens to his music. I had no idea what he was up to. I'd never have bought it for him if I thought he'd be getting into trouble. He's meant to be staying tonight. His mum's got a dinner party. She wanted him out of the way. So what happens now? We bring him in. Meet again, Miss Evans. Kel Surprise. If you could just open the boot, it's a routine check. The boot? Spare tyre. We're very big on safety. It's fine, I checked it myself. It's to put my mind at rest. If you could just indulge me. Been selling more tellies, have we? I see someone's been giving you duff cash again. Oh, careful, Tony. Don't want to smudge him. Does the name Pete Larson mean anything to you? Pete Larson? I've never heard of him. For the benefit of the tape, I'm showing photos of Eddie Evans with Pete Larson in a cafe on the Carswell Lane. The photographs were taken less than an hour ago. I didn't know that was his name. How long you been working for him, Eddie? I don't. I got this call yesterday, it was him. Why would he ring you? He wanted me to do a bit, a bit of work. Counterfeit money. Why did you meet Ron Perry? For the benefit of the tape, I'm showing Eddie Evans a photograph of himself taken with Ron Perry earlier today. To sell on some of the funny money. He'd asked for five grand, but he backed out when I got there. Okay. 
Let's talk some more about Larson. Now I hear you've got to be pretty careful around him. If he knew you were here talking to us. Who's talking? I don't know anything. I swear. If Larson doesn't get you, the judge will. A total of five grand in forged twenties. It's hardly small change, is it? Mm -hmm. What's that, ten, fifteen years? If the judge is in a good mood, mm. you are playing with the big boys. I don't think you're up to the game, are you, Eddie? I can't do ten years. Fifteen would kill me. There must, there must be some way you can help me. Some way you get me a lighter sentence. What's going on, Dad? Thought you might be able to tell me. What do you mean? The music, Liam. Don't play games. Now, what have you been up to? Do you have any idea the amount of trouble you're in? Liam! Liam! Come here! Liam, no! No! Listen! Listen, Liam! Listen! You've got to go down the station, son. Don't let him take me please! I'm only trying to make a bit of money! Listen, we'll get through this, okay? We'll get through it. Liam Orm, I'm arresting you for the illegal downloading and distribution of music. I bought the machinery from a guy down Seven Sisters Way. Bit specialised, isn't it? Name? He didn't give it. There's a guy who distributes the cash once it's sold. Name? Don't tell me. He didn't give it. Who gave you the cash to buy it, Eddie? Larson? You really are in his back pocket, aren't you? You're going to take the rap for everything, you know that. He'll walk away scot-free, he always does. Not really cutting much of a deal, are you, Ed? I mean, what have you put on the table? Addresses to operations we already know about. Details to crimes we've already solved. And three men whose names you can't remember. Interview terminated 1439. Come on. Wait! I got something, but I need a guarantee. A guarantee? For what? We don't know what you're offering. Shut the door. You give me something I can work with, Eddie. And I guarantee I'll do my best for you. Before I do, I need to know exactly what it is we're talking about. It's about when Garrison was shot. What about it? I know. Something. What's that, Eddie? One of Larson's henchmen killed Garrison? Safe to say we already know that. What we want is a name. What did you hear? It's not what I heard. It's what I know. Okay, what is it you think you know? I was there. At the shooting? Yeah. I saw everything. Give me a name! <laughs> it was him. Who? It was Larson. He didn't hire someone else to kill Garrison, he did it himself. I saw him. Picked Garrison up from a probing tower hamlet. They'd arranged to meet. I drove them out to the old warehouses on the Eastfield Industrial Estate. They got out of the car. Larson said they were going to talk. You didn't think Garrison was in danger? I knew they'd had a bit of a falling out. Everyone did. But I, I thought this meet was to put all that behind them. So they got out of the car. I must have waited a good half hour, maybe more. I heard voices. Larson. And Garrison, shouting, arguing. Well, what were they saying? I couldn't work most of it out. But I did hear Larson telling Vince that he'd stepped on his toes. No one does that. I walked up, looked in, just in 
time to see. What did you see, Eddie? He shot him. Shot him. This sounds like you're telling us what you think we want to hear. I swear it's the truth on my life. Are you willing to make this official? We need a signed statement, Eddie. He kill me. He won't get to you. We won't let him. Larson can get anywhere. I need you to look after me. Take care of me, please. There's only one way we can help you, Eddie. And that's by putting Larson away. Are you prepared to go on the record with this? Oh, Tony, can I talk to you about Tony? Tony? <laughs> Sorry, Matt was my way. Oh, that's all right. Look, there's been several times today when you haven't been, well, too receptive. What? Receptive. I'm only asking because I'm worried. How's your hearing? What are you talking about? Come on, mate. We've known each other a long time. We can talk about it. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing wrong with my hearing. Exactly how long have you been selling CDs, Liam? Since my dad got me the gear. Roughly how many have you sold, would you say? Four, five thousand. What? What else did you think I was going to be doing with it? I thought you were doing your own mixes or whatever it was you told me. I needed the money. For what? I just needed it. I'm killing myself making mortgage repayments and paying maintenance to your mother. I give you everything I can, everything. Liam, how much do you sell the CDs for? Three or four quid. Sometimes a five aren't. Like if it's a double, you know. Extended tracks, remixes. So if you've sold 5,000 at three quid each? That's 15 grand. What have you done with the money? Are you on anything? Do me a favour. This is copyright theft. The British phonographic industry, they're going to insist on us pressing charges. They're going to want to make an example of people like you. So when you get to court, and that's not an if, that's a when, don't take that at you, because believe me, you'll only come off worse. So what's the next step? He'll need to be interviewed by the Financial Investigations Unit, hand over his bank books, cards. Bank books? He's a 15-year-old boy. He doesn't have that kind of thing. They're back at my dad's. But it's not all in bank accounts. What? I've got a flight case as well and some of the money's in that. How much? I don't know, I spent a bit. On what? Stuff. What sort of stuff? Just stuff, all right? No, it's not all right, Liam. Who do you think's gonna pay you fine? Your mother? A new bloke? It's gonna be me paying it, Liam, and I think I deserve a few answers. Can you calm down, please, Mr Orm? I'm looking at a fine and now I can't pay and you're telling me to calm down. You've let me down, do you know that? I did it for you. I don't need this, Liam. I don't want this. You think I don't know, but I do. You know what? I heard Mum talking, and she said, the way you're going, you're going to be out on the street. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Why do you always pretend it's all right when I know it's not? I've seen the bills, Dad. I've heard you on the phone. I know you can't repay the mortgage. I've done this for you, that's all. I'm just trying to help. I just can't get my head around it. I mean, why would Larson kill Garrison himself? It was personal. Larson's a great friend, but a terrible enemy. We could get him for this. A murder. Get my right arm, I tell you. Zane, this case is no longer ours. Evans is being interviewed by DC Markham. You handed it over to NCS? What for? They've been working with MIT and they've been trading Larson for months. So have we. We should be handling this. Well, it's not your decision. Or mine. Okay? DC Markham. Dears Nixon. Ah, well done for getting something on Larson. We need to bring him in. Sure, I'll sort that. Evan signed his statement yet? This is DC Nadir. Hello. Um, he's requested legal advice before he even thinks about signing a statement. He's terrified, understandably. His brief's on the way in. He wants guarantees. I can't say I blame him. We need to organise a warrant to search the Larson property in soon. We need to get there before he finds out we've got Evans. Right, do you see an idea? I think I can manage that. 
What's his problem? Oh. Uh, we'll need uniform for the search if you uh, wouldn't mind organising the troops. Absolutely. Thanks very much. Spoke to the financial investigation unit. Oh, finished with Liam and his dad. They found 17 grand in bank books and cash. <sighs> I'm in the wrong job. I knew it. Yeah, he only wanted to give it to his dad, pay off the mortgage. In some ways, I'm sorry he couldn't. Come on, Robin Hood. Haven't you got more important things to worry about? Like your little married lady. Speaking of which, how does she divide her time between you and her husband? You got a rotor? Believe what you want, Amber. It's none of your business. Casper. Sir. Uh, Mr. Casper, about that meeting that you mentioned earlier. I'm free now if you want to come talk to me. Yeah, that'd be great. It's her, isn't it? It is. That's why you couldn't say, because she works at the station. Don't be stupid. It's written all over your face. Anna's. You're having it off with the Barack Commander's wife. I can't believe I never guessed. But there's nothing going on. You got that? Sure, I get that loud and clear. There's nothing going on. Repeat, there's nothing going on. As you know, both NCS and MRT have been after it for a number of years. We're hoping this search will turn up something which will link into the garrison room. Or two teams of Is this right? I've been tasked on the search of Pete Larson. Yeah. Okay, You've got a witness who says Larson killed Vince Garrison. But when did this happen? Just now. Evans' statement is good, but we couple it with a bit of physical evidence even better. Um, look, given my situation with Louise, do you think I should be on this search? I thought you'd be chomping at the bit. Well, I am. But, look, <laughs> that he almost caught me and Louise in bed together around there and... I just don't want to put her in any more danger. And you shouldn't have started sleeping with her. If you want to miss out on nailing Larson, it's your choice. Looks like he's been expecting us. He's been expecting us for years. It is isn't our local Dixon and Doc Green. Mr. Larson. Don't worry. She's vegetarian. I have a warrant. Search these premises, Mr. Larson. I'd like for you to come down to the station and answer a few questions. Am I under arrest, officer? Not yet. What's going on? Nothing for you to worry about, darling. Just going to go and help these nice policemen with their inquiries. I'm sure Sergeant Smith can look after you while I'm gone. We think we can tie Pete to the Vince Garrison murder. Let's get on then. Come. Come. Remember, Come. anything that Larson shouldn't have that's going to give us a better chance of putting him away, all right? Uh, Sarge, what better done? I'll lock her up in the back room. I can't allow myself to think about that now. I can't believe you came here. Pete saw you like he's seen you here before. Look, I'm on police business. There is nothing to worry about. We just have to stay calm, OK? Let's not talk here. OK, let me sort the dog out and we can go upstairs. Dodge! We've got Larson booked in. Interview room one. He wouldn't stop talking all the way over here. What about? Willie reckons he's got an alibi. Says he was having lunch with his wife the afternoon Vince Garrison was murdered. Susie, would you put a call through to Uniform and get her to come down and cooperate that story? Sure. Yeah, well done. I'm going to make a start. Hold on a minute. 
Don't you think it would be a good idea to involve someone who's been on this from the very beginning? What? I interviewed Evans. It was me and D.S. Nixon that got him to cough. And I'm the officer from NCS running the case. I do the interview, you observe. Take it or leave it. Fine. Hello? Smithy. Larson's told us he's got an alibi for the time Garrison was murdered. Then why doesn't that surprise me? Who is it? His wife. Listen, I'll check the location they said they were at, but we need to talk to her. Will you ask her if she'll come into the station? Yeah, okay. I'll ask. Thanks. Peter's named you as his alibi. Vince was my friend. I wouldn't murder anyone, I couldn't. It's not in my nature. Any idea who could? Somebody with a grudge. Maybe upset somebody. Pushed his luck a little bit too far. And how would he do that? He might have got ideas about his station. His ambition always outweighed his abilities. I used to say to him, Vince, one of the greatest tricks in life is to know your place in the world. The other is to stay there. <laughs> We've got officers checking the restaurant you said you were at. I don't doubt it. They'll check credit card, restaurant bills. Never use credit cards in a restaurant. I mean, you can never trust the bloke behind the bar, can you? You could be having your hundreds. Always pay cash. And obviously you booked the table in your name. False names. Mr and Mrs Smith. It's my wife's idea. She's a born romantic. So, I can go then. Unless you've got something to charge me with. Have you got something to charge me with? Oh, you're not backing up his alibi. Of course I am. You can't be serious. You were nowhere near him. You were with me. I'm his wife. And he is a murderer. What do you expect me to do? I don't have a choice here. This could be what we've been waiting for. If he goes down for this, There's then... no way he's going down for this. Well, no, not if you give him an alibi, he won't. I'm giving him an alibi because he won't. If I stand against him, I end up as dead as Garrison. And if you don't, then you'll never get away. This is everything that we've been hoping for. Do you still want to be with him? Of course not. Well, I don't have a choice. If the right chance comes up, I'll take it. This is the first time you've been here. I have been here time and time again. I know the drill far better than you. So watch and learn. No, nothing in here, but... If I don't give Pete an alibi, I sign my own death warrant. Is that what you want? Is it? No. My one is for us to be together. Look, there is one thing. What? That day that Garrison got shot, Pete had a gun. What, here? Then where is it? I don't know. Oh, Louise, come on. Look, all I know is, is that... Pete had it with him when he came home, but he didn't take it when we left, so... It's got to be here. If you can find it. Then we've got him. I booked the restaurant myself. We hadn't spent a lot of time together in a while. It was a chance to catch up. Under what name did you book the table? Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It's a private joke between me and Pete. Right. Um, you say your husband paid the bill in cash? Yeah, he always does. He says it's easier to wangle a discount if you do. Hard to barter with a credit card. Mrs. Larson, you are aware that a man was murdered, got shot on the head on the afternoon in question. I am aware of that, yes. Vince was a close friend. Pete was extremely upset when he heard what happened. Mrs Larson, I feel I should inform you that if we find your alibi is false, 
then you could be charged with perverting the course of justice. You're lying, Mrs. Larson. You know it and I know it. Prove it. Now, is there anything else I can help you with? No, that'll be all. Thanks for your cooperation. Decent idea, I think we're finished here now. You all right? Hi. Look, I came by to see you. I wonder where you got to. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I have a home visit. Hey, congratulations on your day. You've been accepted on the TSG course. Didn't you know? Well, no, I didn't, but I do now. Wicked. <laughs> How come you were before me? Well, Ian told me. Oh, well. I mean, Smithy said to me this morning I'd have to wait ages. Well, I'm obviously not the only one who's noticed your potential. Uh, maybe we can do something later to celebrate. Oh, oh yeah, listen, that's what I've got to tell her. It's Amber, she knows about us. What? How does she know? Did you tell her? No. Well, she guessed. What, just out of the blue? Are you having an affair with the borough commander's wife? I to tell her she was wrong. She won't have an any. Oh, this is all I need. Listen, don't worry about it. I'll have a word with her. Tell her to keep it to herself. No, you have done enough. I will sort it. If you get involved, don't you think it'll be like admitting it? Oh, Dan, is there any point in denying it? What's that all about, isn't it? Oh, come on, you didn't buy that. She's covering for him. You wading in like that didn't help. I told you I'd do the talking. She's giving him an alibi. Doesn't matter. The witness has folded. Evans has withdrawn his statement. Why? When? According to the custody sergeant, Evans' solicitor had a long chat with Larson's solicitor and... He got to Evans through his brief. Either they're leaning on him or they're paying him off. Either way, they made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Brilliant. So we've got nothing on Larson. Absolutely nothing. I don't know what message Larson sent, but it certainly hit the target. Evans is terrified. Just wants out. What do we do now? Release Larson. His brief is already screaming blue murder. That means we'll have to call off the search. I want everyone out before the Larsons get back. Well, what if there's evidence in there and we don't get it? Then it's too late. Larson's free to go. We have no choice, DC and Adir. We have to stop the search, OK? I'll let Sergeant Smith know. Yeah. What? Evans has withdrawn his statement. Well, Chuck. Well, Louise backed up her husband's story, so we've got nothing. You've got to call the search off. Well, we can't. Not yet. Larson's about to be released. <sighs> Look. Louise thinks that there's a gun here. The one used to kill Garrison. Do you know where it is? Well, no. Look, we're tearing the place apart. How long have we got? I don't know, about 20 minutes. Look, you've got to get the search team out before the last ones get home. I'm going to come over and help you, look. Right, everyone, we've got 10 minutes. I was hoping to catch up with you before you left. Why is that? Well, I think you probably know. There's no need to pretend, Amber. I'm not worried. I mean, why would I be? If you did say anything, who are people going to believe? Some gossiping PC? Or the Borough Commander's wife? Look, Rochelle, I'm not going to say oh, anything. Oh, no, I know you won't. Because if you did, I'd be really disappointed. You'd be surprised at how difficult things could get between us. Are you threatening me? <laughs> well, of course I'm not. I'm just offering you some advice. That if you did make the mistake of saying anything, trust me. You would regret it. Anything? Nothing. Okay. I'm going to continue checking up here. Well, I'm going to go downstairs. Hello? Terrific. They've just released Lars and they're signing him out now. Look, I know that the gun's here. We need more time. Okay, well, let's not waste what we've got. I'm going to go down to the corner of Stanbeck Avenue. They'll have to pass that on their way here. As soon as I see them, I'll let you know. Okay. You've got about five minutes. Right. Next time you want to act on duff information, I suggest you think it through. Having a badge doesn't give you the right to throw around whatever allegations you like. We had a reliable line of inquiry to follow, Mr. Larson. Not that reliable, obviously. We'll get him. 
It's only a matter of time. I wish I had your face. He's too cocky. You slip up one day, and when he does, we'll be there. After you. Hello, you've reached Smithy. Come on. I'm not here to take your call, so leave a message. Smithy, I don't know what you're playing at, but they've just passed me. You've got two minutes tops. Now get out of there. Smithy, where have you been? Look, I've just got a signal back. How long? They're on their way. You've got to get out of there. I'll drive around and pick you up. Next time on the bill. Check upstairs. I want an officer I can trust with the facts, and that's not you. She betrayed me, and nobody betrays Pete Larson and gets away with it!